So I wanted to go over how we, uh, how we healed our alpaca from tip paralysis. Uh, the one that was sick was the one, the white one in the back. And the one in the front is the Suri alpaca, the one in the back is the Wukaya. And he got a tick on him somewhere. And I started acting like he was drunk and we didn't know at first what it was. And then it looked like some kind of neurological problem or we thought that maybe he'd eaten a weed or something that was causing him to be sick. And he went down. And then we tried to pick him up and get him moving and he would stand up for about five seconds and go back down again. And he couldn't even make it over to the food or the water. So we took that water bowl right there and scooted it over near his head, not right in front of his head, but to the side of his head so that he could still lay his head down. And we drug him on a piece of cardboard uh, over into the shed so he was in the shade. And I actually put a fan on him because it was pretty hot that day and let the fan run. Ah, the big one's picking on the little one. Uh, anyway, so we he wasn't eating or drinking. I put some electrolyte in the water and we couldn't get him to eat. I gave him some pack of pellets which he really likes and he took some bites of those but he still wasn't drinking. You know, and the fluids are the most important part. He's got to drink. Um, he also wasn't getting up to go to the bathroom either. So, and I think yeah, I saw him chewing his cud that night where they regurgitate it up and then chew again. But then the next night I didn't see it. So I knew he was getting sicker and he couldn't stand up at all the next day. So we called the vet. The vet said he had tick paralysis and we have plenty of ticks in our area and the deer come through here. So, to find the tick and get it off of him, well, we couldn't find the tick. He hadn't been sheared at that point, and their fur is so thick. I tried looking on his belly and his legs and his face, which is where they said it would most likely be. Couldn't find it. The fur is so thick. Finding a little tiny tick is near impossible. So, the vet said that we could put some ivermectin, the smallest dose, which I think would be one bar on the stick. I think that's about a 100, 125 pound weight animal. Our animal weighs about 125 pounds, so I gave him a 125 pound dose of ivermectin horse paste. I think that's 1.87%. And I squirted it in between the, on the side of his mouth between the gap in his teeth, the front and the back. And he didn't like it. And he licked, you know, he licked his mouth a little bit, but he didn't like the taste, but had to be done. So, and then I went about shearing him because he was down and I, it looks like he got butchered, but we uh, we sheared him as best we could. I didn't shear his head because he kept jerking his head back. And uh, so sheared the rest of his body and we looked all over for the tick. Still couldn't find it. And at that point, uh, we, I saw a tick floating in the water bowl and the water bowl was in front of his head. So I'm thinking, and that was about 45 minutes in, maybe an hour, that the tick was in his nose or his ears or somewhere on his head. And it didn't like the taste of that ivermectin that got into his bloodstream and it backed out. It kind of soured the milk, so to speak. And it fell into that water and that was the only tick we found. Um, that night he got up for two minutes to pee and uh, went back down again. And I kept feeding him by hand his pack of pellets and I was putting some Timothy grass in front of him and the water, making sure he had fresh water with electrolytes. and. Uh, so this went on for four days, and at the four-day mark, he uh, he got up and he actually went over and he laid by the bigger alpaca who was laying in the shade in the forest over here, and uh, and so I thought that was a good sign since he's moving near his herd mate. Uh, and then he but he laid there all day, and then he moved back over here. I came out with the pack of pellets, and he heard the 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 can, and he came walking up to me, wanted some pack of pellets, and I was just shocked. And so I put the pack of pellets in the feeder there, and they got the bugs on there flying near their face. They hate the bugs. I put the pack of pellets in the feeder, and he came over and ate them, and he's been standing. He, and he went down a few more times, and I think he slept all that night. He's had a pretty rough four days. And uh, then the next day, he's up. He's been up ever since. So uh, giving him the vitamin B six shots every eight hours in the rump. And you got to look up online where they get those. It's a vit vitamin B. I'm sorry, vitamin B complex fortified from the the feed and tax store, which has the thiamine in it that makes them hungry, that makes them want to eat, and then eating makes them want to drink water. So those are good things. When they're not drinking or eating, that's a good thing. 
and I was doing four cc, four milliliters every eight hours as per the vet said. And you can't really overdose them on it because they uh, will just pee it out if they can pee. So I think the, the vitamin shots getting the food by his food and water by his mouth so he didn't have to move towards it. And I think that pretty much saved his life and getting the tick off him in the ivermectin paste. So if you have an alpaca with tick paralysis, that's what I did to save this little guy's life. He's two years old, so I don't know if the big one there that's 10 years old would have survived it, but uh, the two-year-old survived it. And they can actually go into respiratory failure. The paralysis can expand so much that it goes into respiratory failure. And he was having a hard time holding his neck up, so it was getting pretty bad. It was spreading, and he was getting sicker by the, by the hour. So that's what I did to save his life, and I uh, hope that helps someone here on YouTube. Bye.